All right, finally I was able to set up everything. So sorry about that, sorry about the delay. As usual, hello my friends and welcome to Flying Circus Models. So today I will try to paint the Niendorf uh, propeller for my Halberstadt CL2. So that's the propeller that I have right now. Um, so what we will need to use uh, to paint it. Uh, so first of all, this will be the base color that I already painted propeller with Biesch from Vallejo. Uh, the number is 70.917. Then uh, we will add uh, some Acrison wood brown number 37. Um, I will use a different type of uh, brushes with the different sizes. And uh, we will need to have some oils. So I will use the rough sienna oil. And uh, to cover everything, once the oil is dried, uh, I will use the regular Futura, the future. But first of all, before uh, starting an, uh, any project, uh, I prefer to have uh, a nice cup of coffee. You can drink whatever you want and just try to enjoy the, the view and uh, try to enjoy this build. Okay, so as I said before, it's uh, already painted uh, uh, with the uh, Biesch color as the base. It was very simple process, so I decided not to uh, do this online. And right now we can start to paint. Okay, yeah, I see that we have a couple of comments. Greeting from Cincinnati. Good evening from uh, Camp. Uh, just give me a sec. It's a little bit closed. Uh, Cambridgeshire from UK. We have the no, uh, 1 p.m. right now, Eastern time, uh, Atlantic time, sorry, where I'm located. So if you have evening, good evening. All right, so... The first, I will use very, very small uh, uh, brush from these three. This will be zero tens, like very, very small. And uh, usually I prefer to start from the like matching and pointing the first uh, layers uh, in the middle. So a couple of here just to know where they will be. And um, actually, this uh, plane, uh, this plane had the cover for the spin for, for the propeller like that. In this case, you will basically you will not see uh, the middle point, and uh, also there is no point to uh, to paint this hub also. But if uh, the plane doesn't have this option. Uh, obviously, you will need to do this. You will need to paint the hub as well uh, using the metallic colors. Um, for the metallic, I prefer to have something like this. The Met Mr. Metal color, stainless or maybe aluminum. They are amazing. Okay, so let's start. So I highly recommend you to look on the real pictures uh, of the propellers and just to know how many layers uh, they had of different wood. Uh, the Niendorf, uh, actually I found a couple of pictures and they had uh, sometimes 
three layers of uh, light wood, sometimes three layers of brown wood. So probably it depends on uh, the period of time and depend on uh, the type of the wood that was available in Germany. Okay, I see Florida is already here. Greetings. I hope you have a great weather there. It's snowing and uh, chilling here in Canada. Okay. Yeah, it should be very slow process in the beginning. Okay, so when we have uh, some kind of start here also, uh, actually I forgot to mention, uh, you can mark uh, with the pencil uh, where you want to put your lines um, for the different woods. Actually, I don't have any pencil here. No, I do have. So what we can do, we can just wait a very slight, we can paint, we can draw actually, the line, and this will be something like the stencil for us. So, as you know, it was laminated and in the middle um, you could barely see the layers, but they were very, very thick. Yeah, so something like that. I don't know if you can see. So that's going to be something like the stencil for us that we will need to try to follow these lines. Actually, this brush is no longer good, it's too small, so we can change it. Okay, I have some Ukrainian followers, uh, Vitai Andrei. So it looks like that the first layer is good. Then we can go to the second one. Okay. 
those lines uh, when you paint them they don't have to be like super perfect uh, because again the wood was laminated actually the propeller was laminated from the different layers they should be kind of even but if you just make the error that's absolutely fine Sorry about the dead air, sometimes it's very hard to talk and uh, be concentrated on the painting. So the second layer is also king. To be honest, I'm more like uh, to paint the axial, axial uh, propellers just because the lines should be very nice and straight and you can just mask using very very small masking tape or you can cut it and then just paint using the airbrush it's much faster rather than just to paint uh, with the free hand I would say But different planes, they had different propellers, and uh, that's why we love them. So, yeah, right now it doesn't look very nice and pretty, but once we cover everything with the Futura and uh, once we add some oils, it should look a little bit better. Okay, so the first side is done.
Uh, right now I have 1.21 p.m. So it's not too early. But again, Canada is a big country. So it depends where you live. I live in uh, Atlantic Canada. So we have 1 p.m. Okay, so this side should be good. And right now we need to do exactly the same uh, with the pencil on other side. something like that Yeah, when you make this type of painting, uh, there is no point to rush, just take your time. Sometimes you need to take a pause and uh, just shake the paint again You can ask questions about the builds uh, or about the sound techniques if you want. I see those questions in the chat. Just to have this little bit more entertaining. Thank you, Jeffrey. Good morning. 
I was in BC only for half an hour, maybe, when I was in Alberta, and uh, there is the point where you can be, uh, I don't remember the name of this, but when you can stay like one side, one leg in Alberta, one leg in uh, British Columbia, uh, at the point where uh, there is the sign which says, the rivers from this point, all rivers, they flow to Pacific Ocean and uh, on other side, they flow to Atlantic Ocean. That's my experience in BC. Hey, in Nova Scotia. Well, I was in Nova Scotia a lot. Okay, so it's almost there for the front side, at least. low model kit stuff Oh, okay, so the, my love for the World War I aircrafts came from the book. Uh, well, actually, I liked uh, planes mostly, and when I just started my, let's say, model building career, I built everything, like tanks, planes, like everything that I was interested in. And then uh, I found the book from Manfred von Richthofen, The Red Baron. And uh, I read his book uh, and basically that's, that was the starting point when I started to love World War I planes and uh, in general this war. Uh, just because he presented this like the fight of uh, knights and uh, it's not like right now, you know, you just shoot the rocket and you forgot about this, mostly. Uh, but there, there was a little bit different. It was like the duel between the honorable men, I would say. So that mostly. And the reason why I started to love World War One planes, I think it's like, I don't know, fifth maybe even more years ago since that time uh, the vast majority of my builds they're just World War One planes okay so the first part is almost done we need to let it dry for a couple of minutes maybe 10 minutes 
uh, but meanwhile we can go on other side and we need to try to match uh, whatever we have on the front because it was the same piece of wood so we need to try to match it And actually there was the period of time uh, when I wanted to build all uh, Manfred von Richthofen and the Red Baron, all his planes that uh, he was flown. Uh, but some of them, they just simply were not present in 132 scale. And then I just decided not to do this. And actually, I do have his pictures. Yeah, so sometimes Manfred uh, is looking at me when I'm building the planes. Of course, he doesn't talk to me. Okay, so on the other side, that's a little bit easier just because you can see uh, like the points where the laminated wood uh, is on this side. So we don't have to use the pencil, but you can if you want. Of course, uh, this make your life a little bit easier. Um, so yeah, so this uh, propeller will be on my current project uh, for the Halberstadt CL2. And basically that's what I have, uh, like the instruction for the rigging. And uh, if you didn't see yet, so let, let it dry for a couple of moments. Uh, if you haven't seen my previous episodes, I highly recommend you. So the option that I selected for the painting, this will be that one, the yellow blue. Very interesting, uh, Marta Elza. Sure, Duke Wellington, enjoy your breakfast and you, you can watch this later, of course. Okay, so let's come back to the painting. Now on the back side it's a little bit boring just because it's going to be straight lines.
how it looks like that. I didn't leave a lot of room for for the middle layer. But that's fine. So right now we need to change the brush to the smaller one. Yeah, just start to build World War One planes and you will love them. And uh, yeah, the war in Ukraine is awful. So hopefully it's gonna end uh, not this year, I believe, but uh, I really wanna end this as soon as possible. But to be realistic, I think it's gonna be not this year for sure. Okay, so that's the back side, and we can come back to this also. Okay, so we need to do the same at, uh, on this side, so this will be like some markers that we will need to follow. Yeah, uh, I think this will be interesting for everyone to see how it happens in the real time. Because yeah, you, you can see my videos of how to, but it doesn't give you the full because they have faster speed. But in the real time, you can understand how much time it takes. Yeah, and the correct grain again it depends uh, on the propeller that you have like on the original plane it's always better to find uh, the original pictures of course but sometimes it's impossible because of the quality of the pictures right they're too dark or too bright so you can or the wrong angle if the light is okay so you cannot see what actually what kind of propeller it was and uh, right now there are a lot of companies uh, that make the replicas but you don't know if it's right or if it's wrong what type of the wood was used if that would have the right color or something so okay and uh, the final <clears throat> middle okay. 
So we need to change the brush again. Yeah, previously it was also a huge problem for me to paint uh, propellers in the right way. But the more you try, the more you practice, the better result will be. And what I really like with Winhattling models that you can have a couple of spare uh, propellers just because they have different options. So you always can keep uh, some spare propellers and you can just practice on them to paint. Okay, so it's done. As you can see right now it looks like super bright and uh, not very realistic. But we can add some more effects but we just need to wait uh, for the paint to dry. And that's on the back. Okay, so for this moment, so we can just let it stay like that. Remove the paint that we don't need. And uh, we don't need these type of brushes anymore. We, we can remove them. So right now, we can use just a little bit of compressed air from the airbrush to let it dry. A mark. Actually, Mark, who just joined our chat, uh, was the person who uh, was such a nice uh, person to make this present of this kit. So thank you one more time, Mark. Okay, so it dried and. Uh, For this moment, what we will need, uh, we need to have this flat brush. So this brush originally was like that, just a little bit thicker, so just flat. And uh, I don't know if you can see it, so it's bristle. I don't know, it's the name maybe of the company. So the company is Ross, obviously, uh, but that's the type of the uh, of the brush. So from what I remember, it was very thick um, pork hair. It's natural, so highly not recommended to use any nitro paints uh, using this brush. So it was flat like that, and they are just cut to make it very, very uh, hard. And I really like uh, to use this specific brush for for the painting the wood effect with the oils. Okay, and uh, we need to have the oil paint. So as I said before, I use the raw sienna color. And we just need very, very little amount of the paint.
to be honest, Mark, I don't like to fill in and send in. It's not my favorite process, sorry. Um, yeah, so if I don't film, usually, but again, it, it depends. If it's, uh, if the propeller is like that, uh, then this will be, I don't know, maybe twice shorter. Uh, but the vast majority of time that this will be uh, not wasted, I would say, but you need to wait until the oil will dry. So right now, yes, we will paint with the oil. Uh, and ideally, we need to wait until all this oil will dry to uh, put the layer of feature. Um, but for the purpose of the video, I will try to make it a little bit faster. Um, it should not be the problem, but I just prefer to wait. And usually oils with this layer, this may take two days probably for it to dry. It's not very thick layer, so it should be very quick. Okay, so we need to have a little bit oil paint and very, very slow. Try to add this oil just to remove this um, like two contrast effect. You don't need to push too much, otherwise it's going to remove uh, the original paint. Okay, so as you can see right now, if we com even compare, like it's not done yet, but even if we compare this layer and this one, you can see the difference already. Yeah, I don't use the Japan dryer for oils. Uh, uh, it's just because I'm not very confident in this, how they will react with the acrylic pain, uh, paint. So I just wait. That's the best uh, option for me. Just wait a couple of days. There is no rush. Uh, I, I'm i not in the race, I would say, and uh, it's just a hobby. Uh, yes, if it's going to be some kind of project that I need to do like very quick and one week or something like for the order if someone orders uh, for me then yes maybe um, but usually i i would prefer just to wait okay so Yeah, so I didn't paint uh, these uh, sides just to have the option for me to, to handle this. I will do this in the end. Okay, so that's how it looks like. Thank you, Mark, for the kind words uh, about the painting. Yeah, as I said in the video, I didn't uh, like the way how uh, losing decals behaved uh, after the painting. So if you uh, if you have the same uh, idea, same project uh, with the same colors, I would recommend you not to put the 
uh, decals and just to have the stencils and uh, just put a lot of stencil dots paint through the stencil and this will be a much much better experience and actually if you don't know what stencils I'm talking about I have a bunch of like that so let it dry for a moment yeah so I have these ones uh, that I prefer to use it's photo edge stencil uh, but then a lot of different sizes to smaller and smaller so basically you can just put the stencil like that paint over with the brown color or something and then just over this paint use very very thin layers of uh, yellow again you can put the uh, decals uh, it's just for me i didn't like uh, that i had some more bubbles and i had to remove them again okay so let's go further yeah the patience is the key for everything Okay, so we have almost done with the painting. Even though that we will not see this central part, uh, I still like to have everything painted even. Again, there is no point to put a lot of paint. It's better to have many times to use this palette or whatever it's called. Okay, so the main part is completed. Right now we need to add some oils on this. I don't know even how to take that. Okay, let's do like this. Okay, so let me uh, review the comments, what we have. Um, yeah, about my plans for this year, I do have uh, a light planes. Uh, it should be 
from what I remember, I posted should be spot 13 on uh, one of the planes, and the second will be Bristol F2B fighter at the post war or later. Uh, I think I will do the Irish option uh, for the post war, but kind of a lie uh, airplane. But again, my uh, plan for the build is subject to the change. So who knows, maybe I will update this and maybe this will be some other builds. But mostly I prefer to stick to the same plan that I have. Okay, so some file, final touch. And uh, right now we just need to be sure that the places where I put the fingers, as you can see, the oil was just removed by the fingers when I pressed too much. So we need to add the oil here as well. And again, even though this part will not be visible under the cover, it's better to have everything right. Okay, so as you can see, the propeller is done. Let me remove that, so this will be a little bit better to, to see. So the propeller is done mostly, and we need to let it dry. And uh, again, just because oils you cannot touch, because everything will be, or hard work will be removed. So you can see the, I don't know if you can, uh, you can see the wood structure when the oil were applied. They give very nice wood structure here. Let me try to move just for, to have better focus. Uh, sorry about that, I can't find the focus, um, but I will uh, post the close pictures so you will see in the, in the video about the build itself. Yeah, and uh, again, uh, Andrew, it depends on the propeller that um, was used. So, for example, uh, yeah, if you have uh, this type of the uh, propeller, you can see the layers. Um, if you have the axial propeller, you will see the layers. Uh, but some propellers, for example, this one, I don't. It was just for, for me to try uh, different techniques. Yeah, this propeller also was just painted with the um, with the base color like this beige, and then on top I used uh, oils, and as you can see, you can hardly see the layers also, uh, but at the same time it's a wood effect. You can see the wood effect, and uh, to make it a little bit more realistic. Uh, you cannot use just only one color, for example, like this one, rough sienna. So with this one, what I did, I uh, used the rough sienna is the main uh, col uh, color to, to have the wood effect. And then I added a couple of dots of um, this one, for example, Indian red. So this color is a little bit red. Oh, it's even just give one second. Yeah, so th this color is kind of reddish like this. But if you add just one, two dots, and uh, then use exactly same color, oh, sorry, same brush uh, to make them like this, uh, this will add a little bit more realistic and more like leaf effect. I don't know if you can see, but here that, that's the place where I added this. So 
again, the wood was not even. It had some dots, some uh, not even uh, stuff. So you can add this realistic effect. So maybe on your propeller it was from single piece of wood or even it was laminated, but from the same type of the wood. Uh, but if it was, let's say, the walnut and oak, it's going to be different color anyway. Again, if we take like the example, the Axival um, propeller, it had uh, two, two type of the woods and uh, those woods, they were in the different colors. The wood itself is the different. So anyway, yeah, this is, the propeller is done. Um, we need to try to add here. Okay, and uh, we can uh, let it dry and small bonus. This will be the, I don't remember how you call it, like the stick part of the landing gear. So it was also wooden and we need to paint this as well. Again, same technique, everything is pretty simple. Same flat brush and uh, oils. And they can give a very nice effect here. Thank you, buddy, for your comment. Yeah, to be honest, I didn't know how it's gonna be because it's in the real time and you cannot, even if you mess up, you cannot make any changes because everyone will see it. But it looks not too bad. Okay, and uh, this part is also painted. And again, we need to wait uh, for a couple of days for the oils to dry. And then uh, I will paint this like in the black. Here are also some black metal parts. But this will be later. And uh, basically that's it. I think uh, that that was the main thing that I wanted to show. Uh, of course, we can cover uh, the propeller and uh, this uh, piece of wood with the future right now, uh, but I will not be able to, to add decals, obviously, because we need to wait until everything will dry. And again, I will not paint uh, this hub uh, in a metal color just because it's going to be covered uh, with the with this like propeller cowl or something. So it's going to be covered. We will not see it, so there is no point to do that. Okay, so I think that we can finish. If you have uh, questions, you can ask them also in the chat and I will reply. Hopefully, maybe we will do this uh, next time with some other project if you find this very interesting. Let me know in the comments as usual. Oh, um, Mark has the question. Yeah, so if, uh, I saw your video, uh, Mark, about S E five that you have the project. I, to be honest, I didn't use this uh, um, this uh, photo edge parts, and uh, I don't know if they are gonna match the size and how you need to do them. So yeah, mm -hmm. to be honest, it's, it's very hard to say. So. You need to try on uh, uh, other type of uh, the plane maybe first 
and then apply uh, to to your project. So sorry, I can't help you with this. And uh, Andrew, yeah, see, uh, as I said, your uh, propeller is laminated from the same type of the wood. Yeah, obviously, uh, you will not see a lot of differences in the colors uh, just because uh, it's the same type of the wood. Uh, but for example, this one and again, Axial, uh, they were made from the different type of the woods. That's why you will have different colors. Okay, then, so thanks everyone. Thanks for watching. It was long one hour. Um, see you next time. See you in the next builds. And uh, by the way, if you would like to have the mug like that, let me know in the comments and we can uh, deal with this. Okay, see you next time. See you in the next builds. Have a good day. Enjoy your Sunday, uh, Saturday, Sunday and weekend.